Hello and welcome to Desktop Deployment. My name's Dave and this is the third episode of the Dominion series. As you may have guessed from the video title, we are on the third episode of the Dominion series. Uh, link above for the first video if you haven't seen any of them yet. And today I'm going to be showing you how I've painted up the Lord Imperatant and his trusty Griffhound. As we've already completed the Vindicators from this set, I thought it best that we get someone to lead them. Before we get on, uh, please remember to like and subscribe, and leave any feedback in the comments below. Okay, let's get started. As usual, I start off by putting the model together and cleaning up any mould lines before attaching the model to a temporary base. I then proceed to build up the bases by attaching the basing materials that came with the models, as well as some cork and a few skulls for good measure. Then it's time for the texture paint. Once the texture paint is fully dried, I mix up some water and PVA glue and start dabbing it onto the bases and then sprinkling grit, sand and then some grainy static grass. After this is dried I then glue on some grass tufts and then using the same PVA and water mixture from earlier I stick down some seeds that look like fallen leaves. Finally I glue on a few plastic plants and go over the whole base with the PVA water mixture to help secure everything to the base. With construction over it's time to bring out the airbrush and give the models and the bases a black undercoat and then a zenithal highlight with white acrylic ink. Once that is dry I airbrush some brown on the Griffhound's legs and feet and then use a yellowy ochre colour from above for the main body of the Griffhound, trying to make sure that I don't go down too far on the legs. Moving on to the Lord Imperatant. I give the metal areas a coat of dark silver and then hit the model from above with a bright silver. That's enough of the airbrush for now. I start with the Griffhound and I paint its talons and tail hair with a black before painting the head and the rock that it's standing on with a dark grey. I then paint the collar with a brown and the beak with a yellow. Next I paint the head armour and the buckles on the collar with a silver and once dry I wash the model with a brown wash. After the wash is dried I give the head a dry brush with a lighter grey followed by a pale blue. I also dry brush the talons and tail hair with a grey and then heavily dry brush the rock with a sandy yellow. Time to move on to the bases. I start by mixing some brown and purple to get a dark brown and I paint the recessed areas with this and the higher areas with a pure brown. Note that I paint the lighter brown whilst the purple brown is still wet so that they blend into each other. Next I paint all the vegetation with a green ink and then as that's drying I paint the skulls with a sandy yellow and the rocks with a grey. I then give the bases a brown wash all over, apart from the vegetation which I use a green wash for. Again I try and do this whilst the previous wash is still wet in order to get them to run into each other and blend. Whilst the washes on the bases are drying it's time to move on to the main event, the Lord Imperatant. I start off by painting the cloth between the joints of the armour and around the neck and also the scabbard with a black. 
Next I paint the ropes, belt and straps with the brown before going on to paint the first layer of white on the tunic. Moving on I paint the handles of the weapons with a dark red and the sash with a blue. I then paint the cloak purple, apart from the feathers at the top which I paint grey, I also paint the same grey on the rock that the model has stood on. Once I've finished with the cloak I give the tunic a sepia wash and then painted the beak on the cloak with a yellow. After the wash has dried I go back over with an off-white, leaving the wash in the deepest parts of the folds. I then go back to the cloak and paint the trim with the same blue that I used for the sash. It's then time for the gold. I paint the weapons, parts of the armour and the halo with the gold. Heading back to the bases for a moment, I give the bases a light dry brush of the sandy yellow that I used for the skull, but making sure to be a lot more heavy on the stone. I then go back to the model, I give the feathers a black wash, the sash a blue wash, and then the cloak and all of the leather a purple wash. As the washes are drying, I start on the face. I first paint all of the skin with a dark red. I then start to paint the skin with a base dark skin tone before going back and painting the eyes white. I layer up the skin to a highlight tone before painting the hair black. With the skin complete, I dry brush the feathers on the cloak the same way that I did for the Grithhound, after which I add bright blue around the eyes to give that glowing effect. Next I give the stone that the model is stood on a very heavy dry brush with the sandy yellow. Back to the bases again, I then dry brush the vegetation with a bright green. This really shows up on areas where I'd previously dry brushed with the sandy yellow, like the edges of the leaves for example. I then go back to the Griff Hound and paint its eyes with the same bright blue that I used on the Lord Imperatant. One of the last steps of the basis is to paint the skulls with an ivory colour, making sure to leave the recesses. Then it's time to paint the rims black. As the base rims are drying, I give the models a gloss varnish. Once the varnish is dry, I then pin wash the models using black oil paint. Any areas that I've accidentally got oil paint on, or any areas where I've put too much, I simply wipe away using a makeup sponge. After the oil paint has dried, it's time to remove the models from their temporary bases and glue them to the finished bases. When gluing the models to the bases, I noticed I'd misjudged the Griffhound's base, which meant that I'd have quite a noticeable gap between the model and the base with one of its legs. To fix this I found a bit of stone that would slide into the gap and then painted it grey, gave it a brown wash and once dry I gave it a heavy dry brush with the sandy yellow. With the piece of stone now painted I apply a small amount of glue and slide it into place. The final step, as always, is to give the models a matte varnish. And here we go, ready to lead the Valiant Stormcast Eternals into battle. With this project, I'd have to say I'm not 100% happy with the result. If I were to do it again, I'd probably change the colours on the cloak and the tunic. Maybe go for a purple tunic instead of white, and a blue cloak with white trim. Another thing I'd probably do is take more time in the construction phase. I don't know whether it's a general problem with the models, my guess is probably not, but I did find that there were some quite big gaps when I put it all together. I probably missed something that needed trimming or fine down before I put the model together though. Due to there being big gaps, I used liquid green stuff to fill the gaps, but I think they were too big for that material. It would have been better off using actual green stuff and I would have got a better finish. I feel it's most noticeable on the back of the Griffhound and the tunic of the Lord in Paratons. But on the positive side, I have learned something from this project, which is always a good thing, 
and it's also another model for my pile of grey plastic that's now painted and can be used on the tabletop. Win-win. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please hit those like and subscribe buttons and feel free to share the video with your friends. If you have any feedback on the video or the channel, please leave a comment below. I do read them all. Stay safe and hope to see you again soon.